Hello, uh, good evening or good morning or good afternoon. My name is uh, Peter Lufers and I'm the project creator to the exhibition City Arctic Culture and Climates. Thank you for joining us from across the globe. It is a great pleasure to introduce this event presented in partnership with Native Spirit Foundation and accompanying the City Exhibition Arctic Culture and Climates at the British Museum. At the heart of the exhibition are the lives of Arctic indigenous peoples. Building on our experiences with indigenous peoples across the Arctic, lead curator Amber Lincoln and myself as project creator have stressed the importance of collaborating with indigenous institutions and individuals in our exhibition. With a focus on weather, we underscore the lived experiences of climate changes and other experiences that Arctic indigenous people have faced. Amongst our collaborations, we have been fortunate enough to receive guidance and teachings from different Sami, like the Quichan elders from Northern Canada, who have been teaching me over, for over 15 years. Learning from these Sami collaborations through listening has been instrumental in getting things better. My first visit to Sapmi and being introduced to Sapmi Sami culture was as a visiting young researcher at the University of Tromsø in 2009. During this time, I attended events at the Sami Center, visited a Sami community, and received classes about Sami culture. In this year, I also traveled by car to Rovaniemi and crossed important Sami reindeer herding areas. In 2019, as part of Arctic exhibition, I attended an event called Kotur Sapmi in Kuruna, Sweden, after receiving an invitation. I was happy to run in with the Sami friend and leader, Lars, Ate, Lars Ante Kumunen, who was kind enough to take me to the communal reindeer coral. These experiences and my correspondence with Anna May Oli have been by photo. Allow me therefore to thank specifically Lars Ante Kumunen, Sinova Angala, Anime Oli and the participants and contributors of Kultur Submit 2019. I am grateful for their teachings and guidance. I'm still learning and therefore it is with great delight to welcome our chair, member of the Sami parliament in Finland, Perita Nakala Jarvi and speakers, director of Rido Duarte Museet in Norway, Anime Oli Film Commissioner for the International Sami Film Institute in Norway, Lisa Ulmberg, and Sami Joik artist, Inga Marit Kaup Yuso, for this celebration of Sami culture. The discussion will be followed by a short Q&A. Please send your questions to us by using the QA function in Zoom. Later on, we will have excerpts from the films, Ribardit, Pulling in the Bells, and reindeer belong the wind. Now, without further ado, I will hand over to the moderator of the event, Pirita. Thank you, Peter, for the wonderful introduction and welcome to our event. Our event is called Begkalmai, the wind of God. And we hope that the wind of God is with us, just like it's been with us Sami people and Arctic indigenous people when we've been hunting, working with our reindeer and traveling. And today we are here to mark the Sami National Day, which is celebrated on the 6th of February each year. And this is meant to be uh, an event to celebrate, to learn, to share, and hopefully we can bring you experiences and open a little bit of a window to our Sami world. So welcome in and I hope you enjoy the event. We could start um, by um, discussing the collaboration that we are having here. So uh, one of the hosts and, and uh, the institutions that we are cooperating for this event is the British Museum. And maybe, maybe I'll start with Anne-Mai Olli. 
Uh, could you please share how you have been working with the British Museum? And perhaps you can also share some examples, some concrete examples of that cooperation. Yes, uh, I can uh, talk about the collaboration that we had with the exhibition. Um, after the Culture Sapmi in 2019, uh, we got in contact with British Museum and Peter. Uh, and the dialogue that we had was about their uh, plan of the exhibition, how it was going to be the actually the Sami collection that they have in uh, in the plan of using and um, we got uh, information about uh, yeah, all of the things that they have and and what they wanted to to use in the exhibition. Uh, the really good thing uh, with this uh, collaboration was the dialogue. Um, it was uh, quite uh, surprising is one thing because normally if uh, big museums are having exhibition about people and other cultures, they don't necessarily want to hear our version or what we think about that and how to do that, what should they take, uh, take special care of and um, that kind of uh, issues and that was really, really good. Uh, it's about all the things that you can't find in a book, it's all about that. Uh, the people who is in the uh, in the concern or uh, what I want to make an exhibition about actually have the information about and when people are uh, or other museums are making an exhibition on our behalf and are telling our uh, stories and about our culture it should be something that we today recognize and feel that is actually the, the story they are telling about are uh, the stories that uh, we are comfortable with and uh, I recognize myself in. And with that said, uh, and we got the information on what, uh, what kind of objects they wanted to show. Uh, and some of the objects are quite, um, well, it's, uh, it's objects that are, uh, quite important for us, like the drum. Uh, actually, few Sami museums have the drums themselves. They are in European uh, museums. We don't have it, the Sami museums don't have it uh, in their collection. Uh, it's going to come, uh, but uh, at the moment we are borrowing from others, our own uh, heritage. So that is uh, one of the uh, main issues with some of the objects actually with uh, the horn hat. That is one of the objects uh, in concern. And uh, if we can get the slide up, uh, the pictures, you see uh, the horn hat uh, is a quite important object uh, for the Sami people or the women, uh, the Sami women. Uh, it was uh, not, um, well, it was condemned by the uh, Lestadian Nielsen or Christianity in the mid of the 1980s, I think it was. Uh, and uh, it's uh, an important symbol for us today. And uh, the bag you also see on the picture there with the green uh, color on, uh, it have a, uh, bedwork embroidery uh, that is like a, a symbol from the drum. And when British museums ask if they can make some postcards with this object so on, and I told them about the issues, uh, how offensive that will be for us if they're going to make postcards, uh, earning money on these uh, objects that have this history about, uh, it, yeah, it's actually objects that was forbidden, uh, not by ourselves, but by, by others and uh, actually took it away from us. And uh, through that uh, dialogue, uh, British Museum decided not to make this postcard because they didn't want to do anything that will be offensive to us. And the, if you see the pictures again with the Gakti, the, the mannequin, uh, 
uh, you will see that it's quite difficult to see on this uh, example, but you will see that uh, the, the semi uh, male hat have some ribbons on. And if in the middle picture, you will see it's, it's straight uh, backwards. Uh, and on the other picture, you will have it on the, the left side, it will be. And actually, uh, if you are uh, married or single, if it's on the left side, uh, you're single, and if it's right side, you're married. So that's something that doesn't say, uh, or is written in books and uh, easy to find information about. Uh, and uh, it will be re really bad if the person that you are telling about in this exhibition are saying that he's married when he actually was single or he's single, uh, yeah, you know, you know, it can be some problems. Um, and uh, it's also the GACTI will show if you, uh, which, which area are you from? And actually this uh, GACTI on the mannequin is uh, from this Karoshok, uh, Tana, and um, also on the Finnish side, uh, uh, between uh, Karashok and Tana uh, uh, and actually uh, the models will uh, have more stories if you know the details of Agakti and that is also something that is not necessarily that easy for other museums abroad uh, to know about and also the function of the uh, shoes and the function of the the pants, uh, the in, in reindeer uh, fur. Uh, one of the most important thing with people in the Arctic area is that you need to have um, competence uh, or you, you need to know how to dress. And one of the most important thing is not to have snow inside your boots. And uh, that was also important that this mannequin was not uh, telling a story that was not correct because that is one of the most uh, important thing to, to, to survive in, in this area if you're going uh, in the snow and to keep it outside, not inside. So it, it was details like that that uh, we had a lot of uh, talks about uh, what is important to know and what you can't necessarily find in the, in the literature. You actually have to know this. Uh, and this information, actually, the people themselves have. So this dialogue between British Museum and us uh, was quite um, interesting because we actually uh, was able to see how others are looking at us and also uh, we had the possibility to tell uh, what is important if you're telling stories about the Sami people what is important uh, knowledge to to give so uh, I'm really grateful about this uh, collaboration that we had and also that it didn't come any postcards uh, from this uh, Exhibition. Thanks, Anne Mai. Um, a personal reflection on the horn hat uh, in display there. Um, it has become somewhat of a symbol of female Sami power and decolonization in the last few years. So, this is a hat that we had lost for about a hundred years uh, because it had been forbidden um, by the priests. And as you can see from the hat that I wear today, it has grown, it used to be flatter a <laughs> hundred years ago after the, the horn was kind of cut off. So it's been rising again and the power is shown there. Um, but to me personally, that particular hat in the exhibition has um, great significance. Uh, and I visited that hat and it was actually the first Sami horn hat that I ever saw with my own eyes. And I'm so happy that it's being shown in London, and I hope that people can go and visit it or have visited it, um, and, and also that it can be seen on the British Museum website. Uh, it's really great to see that. And we have, start, we have started revitalizing that hat. So uh, in the recent years, a lot of Sami women have relearned uh, and decolonized that tradition and have kind of taken back that tradition. I also own one horn hat. Um, which has been decorated to my liking and to fit my Sami dress. Um, and I like to wear it, although it feels a bit strange. There's a lot that is very familiar, but a lot that has been lost uh, such a long time ago that it still feels a bit strange. We have to get used to it. 
But I was wondering, do the other panelists want to give any reflections on some of the items on display there on those pictures? Yeah, uh, I'm Lisa Hondri and I'm the board member of the Sami Museum in Sida in Inari. And uh, it is so nice, Anna my you were telling about the story of the all the objects or items. They have they are uh, they are when this when you are telling the story they are becoming alive and in finland we are so lucky that the finnish national museum is uh, repatriating whole sami collection to the sami museum sida so they those all the objects all the items are coming back home and we can display them in our museum and those items, uh, they are going to tell their story to our people uh, and uh, people can go and talk with them. <laughs> and uh, in that way, we are getting back. So in that way, museums are very important to keeping the collections, but also that the indigenous peoples like we Sami people, we can get back our museum uh, uh, collection to home. So, but the, as, as you say, there is, it's a living history. The stories are living things. The, the item is itself, it can just stay there in the, in the, and it is in presented, but then when the people are coming and telling, what does it mean and what is the history and well, how do you use it and so on, it's an other, it's totally different thing. Yes, exactly. And the collections uh, are also kind of a memory that has been preserved for us. Uh, and I'm wondering, uh, through the eyes of a Sami artisan, someone, somehow, someone who makes Sami handicraft, I know, Inga Mara, you're not only a joiker, but you also make Sami handicraft. What can music, I mean, uh, museum collections uh, what kind of information can they give to uh, Sami handicraft people? Um, uh, hello, everybody. I'm Inga Maret Kaugjusa. And um, of course, I have to say that most of my, um, my um, clothes makes my mother <laughs> because I don't have so much time. But of course, I try myself also do that. And of course, museum uh, is not just uh, important for me also for handicraft uh, because I'm working with traditional yoiks. And now I work in uh, traditional yoiks, uh, which belongs just for women. And for me, it's very uh, empowering to see that how, how, um, how like young people are taking aback uh, old traditionals uh, and um, I, I feel so, of course, feel so um, powery in feeling. And um, of course, uh, when I learn in all the time, because uh, traditional way of uh, making handicrafts, uh, it comes from family. So, um, and of course, many of my members in my family, like my grandmother has passed away. So museum is, of course, um, I have also factories worked uh, um, at museum. So I learned it there very much. And I have to say, when I work at, at museum and I saw um, some uh, handicrafts, what belongs to my family, because my mother is Sami from Norway, from Kautagena, Kautagena. And I started to cry, you know, I don't know what was the, but it's the, you know, feeling and, um, you know, you are so, it's in, in your, very in deep, you're inside. And, and it was so strong feeling to see my, uh, see my family, uh, old handicrafts. And uh, it, of course it gives also so much information and uh, inspiration also. And I, of course, I like everything what is traditional. So, I'm so happy to see also young people that they follow this traditional way of making uh, making handicrafts, but also innovators. So it's very important that because we are living in the modern times, so we have to, and the nature is changing. So so that also affects to the how we how we 
use uh, materials from nature. So, yes, and I want to also say that uh, dialogue, um, when you have good dialogue, so, so that this is the result that uh, magic can happen, that we just need to understand each other. And that is the, very important because if you don't know about another culture, so uh, when you have good dialogue and interesting to hear, um, hear and um, that makes that makes so many things uh, change after that uh, after good dialogue. Mm. Thank you. And with that note, let's continue our journey and. Uh, Let's move into the world of film. Sami film is a new way of telling our stories, uh, giving representations of the Sami and opening a window to our culture. And perhaps we can start by watching an excerpt of a film, Rivadit, Pulling by the Belt, by Elle Sofa Sara. And let's then discuss further on. So let's see the clip now. Sen är en 17, en 18 är, slate 27, tagning 1. Jag vill inte säga att du säger att du inte är en kvinna. Jag vill inte säga att du inte Ja, Det ligger hur så att det spänkte. Det är min malle vi är till. Det är inget som måste nöjda mig släppare. Eller nu att jag har ju strålat på att jag är bara jag skulle nöjda. Det är ganska ofta nöjda där nöjda mig släppare. Me ei paarit nii tiehti, et see on oitsu riippaari. Me kipa tei riippaari. So this was an excerpt of the film Rivadit, Pulling in the Belt by Ella Sofa Sara. And this is one of the many film clips we're going to see in this event, which is of course natural because we're cooperating by uh, with the um, Native Spirit Foundation that does a lot of film work. So let's then talk about the significance of Sami films. Uh, and Lisa Holmberg, you are probably uh, one of the best people to comment this. Why are films so important for us? And, and what does it mean uh, for the Sami to make their own films and, and for us to tell our own stories? Yeah, the, if you are asking me, Birita, of course the films are the most important. <laughs> Everything is. <laughs> but, the, but the films are, the, the storytelling is very important. How we are telling our stories, that's 
how we are creating our future. And that's why it's very important that the Sami and other indigenous peoples, we can, we can um, tell our stories by ourselves. So that's how we are creating, so that not other people are creating our, our future. This LSOFES film that has been touring all over the world, and it, it won last year uh, the, one of the biggest uh, film prize in, the, in, in Toronto Imaginative Film Festival, and it has been all over. And, and as you see, it is an old tradition. It is telling an old tradition way of uh, dancing <laughs> and, uh, and meeting people, but Elisof has, uh, the way she's using the film is very modern way and it's, it's really nice to see. So I have seen in very uh, late last year, two, three last years, the shift of uh, interest of the indigenous films in the world the the there are there has been uh, i don't know if they have uh, uh, too much hollywood <laughs> so that we have they want more authentic films and the more authentic stories and the stories which haven't been in the screen of course our stories they haven't been told at the screen, but we have been telling them thousands of years and still telling them. But the, the shift of interest is there. And uh, only in this week, we had uh, two very, very important and good news. First was the, that the Sundance Institute was giving a big Meratamita fellowship to our young talent. Uh, Maria Bolnango, so they are going to support her whole year to make her next film. And the other one was coming like last uh, Wednesday. <laughs> it was an invitation from Cannes Film Festival. They were inviting us to come and um, present our collaboration with, with Disney Animation Studio when we were making uh, collaborating with the Frozen 2, which was a big box office uh, success to Disney animation, but it was a very big success to us Sami people also because the impact to our generation, the coming generation, those children who are, who, who who were watching the film and the Elsa was singing <laughs> in Sami language. That, that impact is a huge till our, to our children. So to me, the, the, the way we are telling our stories and how we are telling them, it's important. And that's why it's very important that the, we as indigenous peoples, we, we own our stories and we can tell them. Yeah, and this um, this has a lot of similarities to what you were saying, Anne Mai, about uh, the representation of the Sami in the museums, right? Yeah, it's in some way you can say that. It's important that our stories are in our own perspective, and the only one that can actually tell the stories in our our perspective is the Sami people themselves. And it's quite important that we also have the same possibilities that uh, all the others have. So I'm really, really happy that we are getting more and more films uh, that is made in our, long, our own uh, language and in our own perspective. And I think that the generations to come, it's more important because the world is getting more and more globalized or uh, it's like more and more the same uh, so it's more and more important to 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 take care of the differences too so one way of showing the special about the arctic is the indigenous people and that uh, is something that uh, we all are quite proud of i think and films a really really effective way to tell other stories yeah the films are very very effective because it's going to your heart direct 
<laughs> and changing you. And but it is also joy. It is the, the how we are telling our stories and about our life in, with music and the pictures. It's it's very effective way to do it. But now I can see it's it's our time now. <laughs> we are coming and we can we can make our own films. It's it's very good. In 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 the, in Sami Film Institute we have a we have had in these 10 years, we have had almost 80 films premiered and uh, we have more than 50 titles now on production in, in different uh, stage of production. So there are coming, but what is lacking actually, it is the, we need more resources for the children and young people's film, theater length films, TV series, so we are working very hard for that. Yes, and one of the important things uh, that uh, I also want to mention is that many times when others are telling about you and portraying you, uh, the portrayals can be very stereotypical. And there are some old stereotypes of, of the Sami people um, that are very much stuck <laughs> And, and that have been portrayed by some comedy sketches or, or some very, very old films. Uh, stereotypes like the Sami people are dirty, uncivilized, always drunk, unkempt, uh, quarreling among themselves and kind of childlike. Someone who cannot be trusted with any responsibility, someone who can't be trusted to take care of the land, who can't be trusted with, uh, with their own rights and with their own destiny. And of course, we want to change all of that because if those stereotypes are just copied and maintained, then they also maintain uh, kind of the thinking that there are people who are worth more. And then the Sami people, they're not as valuable as others. And, and stereotypes are very effective in kind of cementing those old power structures. And of course, we want to change all of that because uh, at the same time, we are very modern people, very, we're not dirty, as you can see. Uh, we're actually quite educated uh, and, and we take a lot of responsibility uh, caring for the nature and for Mother Earth. And uh, we are also people who are very attached to the land, to our traditions. So uh, we live between keeping those traditions up and also looking towards the future. And that's kind of the image we want to give in events like this as well. So uh, it's uh, amazing to have this opportunity to uh, speak on behalf of ourselves and uh, give representations and, and portray ourselves just the way we want ourselves to be seen to the world. And the film, of course, uh, is a great tool for that. Okay, I am looking at the time and I'm keen to move on to the next topic uh, because I want to make sure that we have time for that. And I will give the floor to Inga Mare Köpjuso. And uh, you are going to Yoik. And Yoik is um, one of our forms of traditional vocal music that is hundreds, if not thousands of years old. And it's our traditional music, but it's also a traditional way of telling stories. It's kind of social glue. It's our medicine. It's our law. It's, it's uh, a lot of things. The yoik has a lot of meanings. And uh, perhaps, Inga Mara, you can tell a little bit what you're going to yoik, and then we'll hear your performances. And let's continue the discussion after that. Okay, my favorite part. Um... I get opportunity to yoik. And um, I'm going to take a three yoiks. And um, I start with the wind yoik. And because many people ask it to me yoik here, the winds yoik. And it's a very um, legend or very famous yoik, uh, Sami yoik, and it's made by Nis Ashlak Valgeba uh, or Ailohash. Uh, we call it him and this is very beautiful yoik and what is very important with yoik also is a spirituality, spirituality and that we now just 
We try to relax and hear the yoik, and I hope you feel the power of yoik. Here comes the wind. to take uh, also very famous yoik and uh, reason uh, why this yoik is very famous because uh, this next yoik belongs to Mari Boine and uh, she is the one of the famous Sami artists from here Sami land and um, Mari Boine her yoik is made by Inga Juuso. Um, Inga Juuso was very clever and very famous and master of yoikin. And these two reasons when I want to take this yoik because I don't know, it's something about power of Sami women in the Canis women. And for me, yoik is also important to left uh, like uh, people and like Mari Boine, she is, um, she has been very um, big inspiration for my music career as an also yoik artist. So now comes Mari Boine's yoik. <laughs> Lay on, 
ಮೊಳಲೆಲ್ಲ ಎಲ್ಲ ಆಮ್ ದ ಸರ್ಚ್ ಯೋಕ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಮೀ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಮೈ ಗ್ರ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಮದರ್ ಮು ಅಹ್ಕು ಶಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಪಾಸ್ಡ್ ಅವೇ ಬಟ್ ಶಿ ಲರ್ನ್ ಇಟ್ ಟು ಮೀ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಟು ಯೋಕ್ ಆಂಡ್ ಐ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಗಿವ್ ನೌ ಆನರ್ ಟು ಮೈ ಗ್ರ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಮದರ್ ಆಂಡ್ she was she was very special woman and um for me it's also i'm very thankful that i got learned our uh, family's yoik through her now comes my uh, grandmother's yoik ellen ellen and i yoik this how uh, how she learned it to me to yoik na 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 lo 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 la 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 lo 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 la 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 lo la 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 lo 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 la lo la 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 le lo 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 la 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 lo 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 la 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 lo la 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 lo 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 le 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 la 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 lo 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 la 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 lo 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 la 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 lo 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 it's a yeah thanks for me for this yoke i have to stop because it was getting so emotional <laughs> you are not the only one ingamar who's feeling the emotion thank you so much that was so amazing uh what an amazing yeah. event we have here film clips live yoking you are really getting to the heart of the sami culture in this event wherever you are tuning into I want to start uh with a question to you Inga Mare why do you think that it's important to keep yoiking alive um of course the traditional uh, yoik is uh, very important uh, for our culture and uh, like we like we know yoik because it's the it's the very old way of how we say singing or chanting but is also very you know strong parallels to storytelling and uh, i have been uh, studying a lot uh, like old yoiks and uh, there you can find also so much information uh, history of people of landscapes and um, everything how people all taste connected to the nature uh yoik is also very important uh, to keep alive also because uh, i feel it's uh, it's our therapy also and um, and through yoiks we can also understand um ourselves our history and um and like according uh, uh, old sami belief so uh landscape like mountains or animals they have also soul and that's why yoik is also like a way to uh, thank because for me example um uh mountain it's it's uh i want to thank my mountain through my yoiks because it's giving a place to the rangers and and um the yoik is um I I think so the yoik uh, can be very important also because we have to remember in many places yoik traditionals or yoik tradition has almost disappeared and uh, I think it's very um important and also empowering see that 
that people also taking back the uh, traditional of uh, of yoiking in their own area because i have grew up in a family where yoik has been always very strong tradition but i have to we have to remember also there are lots of sami people young people uh, um, who are like trying to find their own families yoiks and and when they find them and they work it with traditional yokes, they can find, you know, whole life. I have been uh, talking about many young people who has like starting to find their own yokes in their in in their family. So it's empowering, uh, you know, um, um, thing happen when you because through yokes you, you get so much history of uh, of people who are already gone also. Mm. Yes, so uh, in a way, Yoik is almost like our museum, our history writing as well. Um, but I know, Inga Mara, you also create new music based, of, based on Yoik, and, and you combine the traditional Yoik with instruments and modern music. How do you do that? How do you combine the tradition and, and the new ways? Uh, and is it okay to do so? Mm. Um, of course, the, our life is also changing in modern time. Also, uh, someone also made jokes for uh, Ferrari or telephones. So, <laughs> so uh, life is changing. So we, we need also make uh, like invita invitators uh, uh, things also if, if, if we want to keep it also yoik. And of course, for me it has been very uh, I don't say easy, but uh, very nice to work with Yoik because I have quite strong, you know, connection to the traditional Yoik. So my ground uh, in the Yoik is quite uh, um, strong. So, um, so for me, it was a little bit also nice to get a little bit different way of work with Yoik when I mix uh, music. And of course, it's different to make modern yoik, or how we call it, when I mix with your music. But um, because yoik is about feeling also, so I don't I don't see the limits uh, for for make the new yoiks because uh, yoik is part of feeling. Uh, through through yoiks, I also want to show my feelings. So I mix also yoik um, very much with the songs, song text. So uh, and the yoik is getting so popular. So I I'm so <laughs> happy for that. Also, I can see the uh, the yoik is also quite global thing. So uh, and I'm yeah I'm very thankful that uh, you know Sami artists and um, are making great job and uh, and that we can also spread uh, joy of uh, yoik and. Um, and uh, telling also our stories and our life. It, I, it can be also made with modern yoik because we are, we are also living now in modern time. And I have grew up with the music. So, so for me, it's very um, uh, okay to, to mix yoik with music. But of course, traditional yoiks are, they are like our heart. Uh, where everything comes and we have to we have to keep uh, traditional yoke also alive because that is like language we have to we have to keep this traditional way of yoke of course mm. yes and i think that um this example of combining the traditional yoke or, or yoke elements with uh, new electronic music or with instruments uh, is one of the examples of how our, our culture culture keeps alive. So it's one of our central values uh, to keep our traditions alive, and especially if something is unbroken and has been passed from generation to generation. We're really proud of that, and uh, that's something really central to our culture. But at the same time, uh, I think the secret of our people as an Arctic indigenous people has been to adapt enough to the changing world so that our culture stays alive and uh, to make sure that it, it, it is alive after many, many generations, because that's also 
our way of thinking that it's not only me and today and what my career and what mm. my identity and my tomorrow is, but we think about the next generation and the generation after that and the generation after that. And we try to make sure that we pass on the traditions and also preserve the land and the nature for the generations to come. Mm. One thing that I wanted to pick up on is that, of course, we have mentioned here, for example, the Sami horn hat that was lost for about 100 years. Also, in some families, uh, the Sami yoiking has been lost. Uh, and also our nature-based religion. Uh, we mentioned the, the nature of wind here. Some parts of it have also been lost and have been destroyed by colonialism. But at the same time, there's a lot of decolonization and taking those traditions back. Annemai, maybe you could uh, shed some light onto all of this uh, as a museum director. What is the dynamic that is happening there? Uh, are some parts of the culture lost forever or, or can they be kind of revitalized? Well, uh, we are working uh, with the issues of, uh, of uh, with taking back the culture and techniques and traditional uh, traditional knowledge. Like um, in the museums, uh, we are trying to, well, they're calling it uh, like indigenizing the museum practices, that we are uh, using our own culture uh, and traditional knowledge uh, when we are working with uh, the item that we have in the collections. Um, Revitalizing is quite important when we get, uh, like most of the project, that we are getting some uh, objects from North Folk Museum to back to the Sami museums. It's important that it's organized that uh, doyers and others actually can uh, study the, uh, the objects and, uh, and revitalize and take back techniques and knowledge that maybe have been lost uh, or parts of, it, parts of it have been lost. We also see that the Sami culture is not static. So we see that uh, the change in the society and ch how the, uh, the, the world is going, um, the Sami culture uh, and traditionals are following that. And if we are uh, stopping that process or try to be like before, uh, I'm afraid that uh, we will have some issues with, with uh, keeping the traditions alive. Uh, so it's it's both sides. It's like making new uh, traditions or taking the old-fashioned way and and making it alive in in new settings. Like uh, in conservation, uh, using uh, traditional knowledge in conservation instead of the academic knowledge that is accepted, but also that uh, we are using our own uh, knowledge uh, in an academic way, even though it's it's a long way still. So yeah, uh, in Yoiking also, I think that uh, using your, the traditional way uh, in new methods and with new instruments and, and in a way making new music, it's still tradition in it, because the identity, this uh, this uh, belonging, Yoik uh, is also something about belonging, where it belongs, and the people that, uh, the, if you're Yoiking a person, it has to be, uh, it's also about the, the family and the um, I don't know the English word for that, but, uh, but also uh, yeah, the belonging, I, I, I can't find another word. Um, and also uh, the storytelling, um, revitalizing when we are taking, uh, like the horn hat actually, it's quite interesting that some of them uh, have uh, uh, stories that are, are quite uh, strong stories. And when we was in Berlin and was looking at the horn hats uh, in the museum there, it's quite, really, really strong feeling uh, of um, this, uh, well, taking back your your uh, your history in a way. When you are taking the information back home, you are actually uh, making your own uh, horn hat and actually starting to use it again. And revitalizing and um, accepting that our culture and tradition is not static. It's a part of who we are today. And it's important that this process is going because the generations to come need to be able to, to, to get the, 
the tradition in a way that are suitable with how their societies are today. And it's a balance um, in Norwegian Knivag, um, working on a, uh, it's, it's a, a difficult balance uh, to what you need to, to make sure that is um, in the old way, the traditional way, and but also give it the possibility to be something with the new world and the, and the, and the time to come, um, if you know what I mean. Yes, and I think that um, Joik also carries a lot of that spirituality that Inga Mare was talking about and uh, many of the aspects of the old nature-based religion that we had that was to some extent destroyed by the church and colonialism. But uh, a lot of that also survives in many of our traditions and, and especially with Joik. And now that we were able to listen Joik live, you could feel some of that power. Uh, and, uh, and we definitely felt and had a lot of different kinds of emotions uh, when you were Joiking, Amaret. Uh, what do you hear from different audiences? What do Sami people say? when you yoik, uh, when you're in concerts and yoik, and, and what kind of comments do you get from outsider, uh, outside people, non-Sami people, and are there differences in, in the feedback you get? Mm, now, of course, the yoik belongs to the community. And, uh, and when somebody in community, example, gets own yoik, so uh, he or she is like part of community or uh, identity in uh, this person through Joik. Um, but um, for me, I have been very uh, lucky, of course, because um, uh, because I have grew up uh, with Joik and uh, I can say I'm forced uh, in our generation as, um, as a traditional Joiker. And uh, I, I feel the people, um, like if, if I think if I've been uh, performing also in Scotland uh, and I yoik it there and the people really, they love it, yoik. And um, uh, they maybe doesn't understand my lyrics or what I'm yoiking about, but they say that they got feeling it's coming very far away. And, and I think so also people are searching in nowadays, they want to go to the roots. And, and people are also like, um, uh, want to feel it that. Um, in, in Sami, when I'm, uh, I'm yoking from Sami people, of course, I, uh, I get very emotional because um, Many Sami people, of course, they understand what is yoik. And I sometimes also get, get very stressed also when I have to yoik traditional yoiks because I have so big honor to traditional yoiks. And uh, it's like portrait of, of somebody if, if you yoik someone. Uh, and it's a very big thing. But, um, but I feel that when we, when we yoik also together, uh, like Sami people, so that feels very strong motion. Um, and I, like I said, many I have been many times saying that the, that the yoik is power thing, that it can be made many things. And uh, and we also enjoy, we party also uh, through yoik. So now it's very, I think, so it's amazing that uh, we have so many party yoiks and party music with yoik. <laughs> It's like into gayness, uh, you know, <laughs> shaking with the yoik. So that is, uh, and I, I think so you also, Birita, has many times uh, experienced that, that uh, you know, the yoik feeling. That you, and you feel that it belongs to community. It's, it's uh, so, um, uh, and when, when you yoik, you, you almost time, you're like enjoying or you have like, um, uh, calm down and uh, like climbing changing that is also changing what you told about before that um, because yoik is very tired to nature and um, and uh, when climbing change that also our soul disappear also because nature is also very important to to build this yoik symphony because we are all the time uh, 
connection with the animals and nature. And, and this is also climate change affecting that uh, somehow that uh, through Joix, uh, you can really hear also that uh, us um, are worried about future. And, um, and that's why I see also um, Joik is very important to keep um, alive also that our stories also uh, be strong. And through Joik we can make many things like films and yes. So I will talk Thank about Joik the whole night. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we could definitely do that. But uh, that was the perfect segue to our next theme uh, because we are going to talk about land rights and the future uh, and Sami rights in general. And of course, when we are talking about an indigenous people, it means a people with a really strong connection to the land and to the uh, traditional livelihoods. And why are traditional livelihoods so important to us? Uh, one of the reasons is that uh, they are really the natural domains for our languages to flourish and for our languages to be used. So they are not uh, livelihoods, they also carry the culture and the Sami languages forward. So we are going to see a couple of film clips uh, for, from a film called Reindeer Belong to the Wind. So we continue with, with our wind theme here. But before we do that, um, maybe I'll make one distinction. So um, the film uh, clips that we're going to see come from a film um, where a lot of Sami people are interviewed by the, but the filmmakers uh, themselves are actually Finnish people. And there is a particular distinction between indigenous film and non-indigenous film. Could you explain a little bit about that, Lisa, before we see the clips and, and what is the significance? Well, it is the, the as you said. First of all, of course, the the language is changing. If you are Finnish and you are asking the questions in Finnish, of course, the people are very easily answering Finnish. But uh, uh, I mean, if you are a Sami people making a Sami film, then the questions are coming inside from the community, from the, from the land, from, they have a, a Sami, Sami perspective of the, of the film and the, the storytelling is totally different. And then you can, um, for example, the, the Sami, we, when we are telling stories, we, we are never starting and ending. <laughs> the story is like going round and round and round. And uh, that has been a very traditional way. And that's why it's traditional way, because in the old days, you have to be aware of the wolves and the bears and the predators. So you have to jump out from the tent to kill the wolf <laughs> and then come back and listen the uh, rest of the story. So that's why our storytelling is going like a circle. And uh, it, is, um, it is very important to give that kind of uh, space to the, to, to, to the film also and the film storytelling. And, uh, but uh, when, like this, wind belongs to the, no, reindeer belongs Reindeer, yes. To wind. <laughs> uh, this film is very political and it, it is taking, it is going straight to the point. They are asking those questions from the Sami people, which are bothering them at that moment and it's uh, to me it's a very good film in that way in political film but if we could have had a sami filmmaker maybe the questions could have been different and the answers also but uh, let's see the clips yeah and before we go to the clips um the reason i wanted to ask this was uh, from my perspective uh, perspective i am a member of the sami parliament uh, in finland and the Sami parliament is the official representative of the Sami people. And we have a right to be heard in decision-making that concerns us, our culture, our land. Um, 
But what does it mean? Okay, the state, the government, uh, the officials might listen to us, but they don't have an obligation. They don't have to act upon what we say. Uh, and therefore, it's sometimes important that we have filmmakers, like in this film that we're going to see, the clips from Reindeer Belong to the Wind, Finnish filmmakers coming to the Sami people and asking, what are the concerns that you have? And they can act as messengers then uh, and bring our voice to the public discussion when the situation is that even the official representative of the Sami people has difficulties getting our voice heard and, and having our message taken seriously in the decision making. So let's go to the clips then. Kyllähän se näin on, että kyllähän elämässä pitää mennä eteenpäin ja maailmahan menee eteenpäin. Että eihän, tää, eihän me voida vaan koko ajan, eikä meidän tarkoitus ole koko ajan vastustaa kaikkea. Mutta tämä väkisinkin menee vähän semmoiseksi, tuntuu semmoiseksi väkinäiseksi, kaiken vastustamiseksi, kun, kun ei kuulla eikä oteta. Elinkeinollisesti Ruotsissa ja Norjassa on näin, että, että poronhoito on vain saamelaisten elinkeino. Ja se on heille, se on luoja lykkö, että se on näin. Olen ollut näissä päättävissä hommissa nyt vähän aikaa ja ollut kokouksissa ja sitten ne ei niin kuulla riittävästi. Tai kuulla ne, mutta ne päästävät tietenkin toisesta korvasta ulos. No kyllä ne siinä hyvässä sitten käyttävät. Että hyvässä, että kun se on jotakin matkailua pitää edistää näin, että joku Lapin takki päällä kuvaa, niin semmoisia ne kyllä käyttää. Kun tietää sen vähän sen vuojen kertokulun, niin saattaa sitten enemmän arvostaa sitä poro, poromiestä ja poronaistakin. These were clips from the film Reindeer Belong to the Wind. And uh, this film is going to be available to watch. And I believe in the chat uh, of this event, you're going to get information about where to watch this film for free. Um, and these were only short excerpts from the film. And just as background, so this is an area on the so-called arm of Finland. It's a very narrow strip of land where uh, the traditional Sami way of Uh, working with the reindeer is still alive. And there are some reindeer herding communities there, but they suffer from a lot of different kind of land encroachments, whether it's roads, tourism, uh, nature parks, wind farms, there is a threat of a railway, uh, all sorts of things. And also a couple of mining threats. And, and this film was made a couple of years ago. And uh, even after that, uh, another mining threat arrived last spring. Um, so on this very narrow area, there are um, mining reservations made on top of each other. And the latest one uh, that was, uh, that the information came through Grapevine last spring um, was that uh, a Dutch owned mining company, mining exploration company, Ackerman made a mining reservation, which is the size of the city of Helsinki. So considerable big land space. And um, 
and there is a threat of mining in that area and and we know that reindeer herding and mining don't mix very well so uh, what happened then last spring when there was a lot of despair uh, about this threat an online petition was started i was part of that group working uh, with that petition and and we gathered 37200 signatures saying that we don't want any mining in this area it is also a really important area for people who love nature who love going um, uh, to the nature, to uh, see the birds, uh, um, uh, to go hiking and so on, go fishing. Also for other locals other than Sami, it's an important area. So uh, a lot of ha things happening in that area. And if you want to continue that saga, I've been writing about it, for example, on the Goethe Institute uh, platform called The Right to be Cold. Uh, and you can get a lot more information through there. And also, if you want to support our struggle, there's a lot more information there. And one thing I want to mention before we go to the questions and answers session is that uh, the most important thing that we Sami people are, are asking for is to have a say in decisions that concern us. Um, and in the international law language, uh, what we ask for is free, prior and informed consent. For example, when um, an infrastructure or a mining project or something like that arrives in our area, we asked to have the right to also say no. Sometimes uh, we might say yes, but for all these big projects, uh, we would like to reserve the right to say no as well. Um, so uh, this is not, of course, only a concern for the Sami as an Arctic indigenous people, but this is a concern that many, many indigenous peoples around the world have and, and need your support for. And uh, a lot more about that in the film Reindeer Belong to the Wind that you can watch uh, through the Native Spirit Foundation if you want to uh, hear more about that. Okay, I am looking at the time and perhaps we can uh, move to the questions and answers session. And we've been receiving a lot of questions live here. Uh, and let me pick, on, pick up some of them. Um, maybe we'll start with an easy one uh, and whoever wants to start can start. So um, there was a question on how can you, uh, as a non-Sami, how can you support the Sami culture in everyday life? And, and, and also how can you celebrate the Sami National Day? Who wants to start? I can start. You are very welcome to celebrate the Sami National Day with us always. And uh, how can you support us is to listen to us and respect us. That's what we, that's the only thing we, we are asking or we are waiting. Like uh, also our governments that they, they are not listening and they are not respecting. That's the, if, if we don't have, uh, some children don't have uh, their own language in the schools in Finland, Norway, Sweden, that's not respect. That, that's, uh, that's like, uh, they are thinking that the Sami children, they learn their own language without school, without <laughs> education. We, we learn sort of like, just like that and everything. But the, the fact is that we need the, the school education and that means resources. Also films, we need own music, we will we need own TV programs. That means resources and that's respect. Yes, then there is a question about uh, traveling to Sami or Samiland after hopefully um, um, after the corona pandemic is over and hopefully we can travel again. Um, and the question is about um, how to find um, places uh, where you can experience the culture uh, and not kind of touristy places and, uh, and what is the best way to experience the Sami culture? Maybe Ingemar can start with that. Okay, um, 
Um, yes, there's so many nice places, of course. Uh, here's so beautiful nature. And we are talking about museums. So, of course, you have to visit Sami Museum. And, um, and uh, there you can find uh, uh, lots of information, history of Sami people. And also visiting another um, institutions what are open and um, respecting nature because I also love uh, love go like in in the summer hiking uh, I, I really love it do that but I don't like it because when I'm hiking in the nature I see the how people you know living the um, uh, what is the word. Um, Ruska, uh, Ruska, uh, trash, <laughs> trash, yeah, in, in the nature. So, so that is also very important when you are um, coming to visit like nature, uh, wild nature. So respecting nature and um, and I think so that is very almost and uh, I, I like Lisa said also like the respecting the culture also in uh, in. Um, in different places. Mm. What will that say? So maybe someone has also good uh, ideas or tips how, what you'll do here in, uh, in Samiland. Anna, do you want to continue? Well, yeah, I can do that. Um, I'm thinking about uh, what the response that we get a lot is that actually, if you're going to the Sami areas, going with an open mind and not plan too much um, because often it's uh, it's about taking the possibility when it's happened uh, to be flexible to change the plans because in the semi perspective uh, you never know it can uh, it can change uh, quite fast uh, the plans um, and uh, if you want to see reindeer reindeer herdings uh, you have to time time it. Uh, because in the summer, uh, the reindeers in Norway are at the coast. In the wintertime, it's on the inland. So it's like uh, have some knowledge for what you want to experience and, uh, and choose the areas from, uh, from uh, what that uh, interest is, actually. And uh, the best thing also is to, to, to Google a little bit. Um, it's getting more and more good uh, websites uh, to, to, to learn a little bit before you come. Uh, we have had questions at the museums that people are coming to the Sami areas and coming to ask us for where are the Sami people because they can't find them. Uh, and that is people that actually uh, have learned about the Sami in the, in the old fashioned way uh, and haven't uh, been uh, studying how it is today. We are actually living like uh, the Norwegian, the Finnish people and uh, the Swedish people. We are not in that much difference from them. Uh, but uh, you have to, uh, to choose the area and Google a little bit, but don't make too much plans. That's my best tip. Yeah, that's a great tip. And uh, as you hear from to the say... discussion today, uh, the Sami culture is also very holistic. So everything... Uh, is related to everything. So uh, a lot of things can happen and, and surprises <laughs> can come to your way. But Inga Mari, you wanted to add something. Uh, yes, because I have also many, uh, many like friends who comes like uh, outside from Scandinavia. And so clothes are very important because here in the winter can be quite cold and windy and unstable weather. So very good clothes also, and, and ask people who they know who are like living here. What kind of clothes is the best use in tundra, and um, and in the snow snow world? So that is um, that is also very just came came in my <laughs> mind that that is very important also. What kind of clothes you you take um, up here? Because in the summer it can be also quite cold uh, in the if you go up to the mountains. Mm. Yes, and then there's a question about climate change. Um, on that note, what you said, Inga Maret, um, the climate change is felt the most here in the Arctic region and the change has been really fast. And what have we have been seeing in the last couple of years has been the unpredictability of uh, the climate, uh, the nature, 
uh, and the weather. So, for example, last winter, there, there was a lot of snow, uh, more snow than there has been for many, many years. Uh, but then we also see that um, the ice layers can get really hard when suddenly there is rain in the middle of the winter and it's really hard for our reindeer to get food. So we really feel the effect of the climate change. And uh, there has been a question um, on climate change. Um, and um, the person writes, um, climate change is obviously a major global problem today and it's affecting the Arctic region in particular. And they're asking uh, to what extent you each view this as an existential threat to the Sami culture and traditions, and whether you feel that there are certain things that other societies can learn from the Sami, for example, traditional knowledge or so on. Maybe Lisa can start this time. Well, um, as, as the question is that the, here in the Arctic, the, the you can see the change more rapidly than in other part of the globe. What is happening now in the Arctic is going to happen in, in other part of the world later. But uh, we have to learn from the reindeer. <laughs> they are adapting uh, like to, to the climate change. There is this, uh, uh, for example, that we are getting much earlier, the, the spring is coming much earlier, but the reindeer calves are coming at the same time as they are coming always. So it is so that the, when the reindeer calf is coming, they are, they, are, they are getting the milk from the mothers. And then when the birch leaves are big enough, they are starting to eat them. But now, because of the climate change, so the birds are coming much earlier, so the leaves are much bigger when the reindeer calves should eat them. So, but they are adapting. And I, I think the, the people are also adapting and finding new ways to, to, to live. But uh, it has been, it is a big, it is so rapid. The change is so rapid. It's happening every year. The snow is different. The ice is different. Everything is different every year. So we have to be very alert. And then it is very uh, sad that we can't do anything for this. It is, it's, it's somewhere else. It's, and everything is happening up in the north. So. The more Does anyone want to add something to that, Anne Mai? Uh, yeah, I was thinking about uh, the the climate change. Actually, uh, what that can do for our traditional knowledge, because uh, when it's the, the temperature is uh, changing, we are also getting uh, new insects that haven't been here before, mm. and also new plants, and it's actually uh, taking over and um, the, the traditional ones that have been here from before. And that is a concern because a lot of the knowledge that we have when we are like uh, doing, um, uh, making sisti, uh, traditional Sami leather, um, can we trust that the, the plants that we are using uh, are there in 50 years? Uh, or is it all the plants that are coming and taking the fauna uh, and pushing the, the, the other ones, uh, the Arctic ones more, and more, more away? And that is a concern that uh, we have been talking about a lot in uh, when we are talking about traditional knowledge and also making uh, this knowledge in use in the museums. Um, but I, ha I don't have the answers uh, yet, but hopefully uh, we will get some more research on that area in the future. How about Inga Marit, do you want to add something to that? What can others learn from the Sami in facing the threat of climate change? Um, like like many Sami, like I have many homes because uh, if somebody asks where is your home, so I can I cannot give answer. I have many homes. Like in, in Tuntra, we have a, call it village Auchas Yauri, and I have been there a lot from my childhood because I'm born to the Ranger Husbandry family, and uh, I have been seen already in my generation changing of nature. What is happening? Uh, of this climate change in, because uh, weather is getting warmer. So 
like in our eyes in our lake uh, it's uh, is um, going uh, earlier than uh, than before and uh, like i don't know do you know the cloudberry it's very famous arctic berry uh, it has been happening that is also disappearing in our area and it's um, because because um, uh, permafrost uh, is uh, is going away and that also like keeping uh, you know earth like um, healthy and uh, when that is melting away so effects like fairies and and the ground uh, how it is and also unstable weathers like last year I have I have uh, I had opportunity to be in the tundra many months uh, because of this COVID-19. And I saw in my own eyes how it affects uh, unstable weather and, and rainy winters also. And like uh, reindeers and uh, every animals have problems because uh, you understand when the, uh, it's a rainy winter, so ground also be, uh, is going to be freeze. And it's quite difficult to animals to get food there from ground because that they need. And that's, that's why many uh, reindeer respiratory families, they, they have to feed the reindeers because you don't want to see them die there. So, um, so it's a many things affecting like birds are disappearing and uh, bird is also very important uh, like in our village. So we are also missing, you know, you know, feeling also like why? Why, why we do this for us? Uh, it's, it's not just here in Arctic, but uh, it, it changed everyone's life and after who comes after us. So I think so everyone has to, you know, think about it a bit uh, to the further and, um, and what, we, what we want to leave to the next generations. Yes, you're right. Uh, and there's a lot of observations from the front lines of the climate change struggle that the Sami have. And I think one of the keys to uh, really uh, fighting against the change is to listen to what the indigenous people say, what they see, what they observe, and also what through their traditional knowledge they are seeing and, and also feeling the change. And if we take that knowledge as part of um, the scientific uh, way of uh, creating knowledge as well, then we can really create a better future. And maybe one more thing to add to this discussion is biodiversity. So indigenous peoples are the guardians of the land and a lot of the biodiversity on the earth and caring for the indigenous rights, our land rights and making sure that we have self-determination and we have a say on the land and its use here in the indigenous areas, not only here in the Arctic, but around the world, means that biodiversity and the nature are preserved, not only to the next generations of the indigenous peoples, but to everyone, all of us human beings on this earth. I am looking at the time. I think we're coming to the end of our discussion and our event. And I really want to thank the panelists, Anne Mai Olli, the director of Norway's Rita Totter Museat, Lisa Halmberg from the Sami Film Institute, Joiker uh, Inga Marko Puso, and my name is Birita Nakkelejärvi. I am a member of the Sami Parliament. And I want to thank our hosts today. Uh, Native Spirit Foundation and the British Museum. And everyone have a great Sami National Day on the February the 6th. Thank you. Kiitu.